Yes. Some new background music from StreamYard today. This is this is called Into Space. Into Space. My name is John Hodgman, and I don't like it that much. Let's go back to daydreaming. Good afternoon, as of three minutes ago, here in the eastern portion of the United States, the eastern time zone. All directions are meaningless, of course. That's what we call it, the eastern time zone. That's a little loud. Turn it down to 33. Perhaps you are in the western time zones. Maybe you're just getting up, having some breakfast, a cup of coffee, a piece of yo yogurt. No, you'd be having yogurt over there in the Greenwich Mean Time and European time zone and such. Maybe you're out there in the ding, UK. That's the afternoon. Maybe it's time for your tea and your yogurt. Kate KLG is in the central time zone. You don't have to eat anything. I'm not going to eat while we're talking, by the way. It's not going to be that kind of podcast or live stream. I could do some ASMR though, right? Can I still watch if I'm eating cold mac and cheese in the lunchroom during morning coffee break? Of course you may. Of course you may. Kate in SLC is, I'm making a new morning playlist right now. If anyone has any suggestions about mellow, feel-good music or spring songs, absolutely drop them into the chat for Kate. I recommend First of May by Jonathan Colton. It's a good feel-good spring song. Whoa. Global UTC, Universal Coordinated Time. Athenatic is some kind of robot. I don't know. Uh, Clotted Cream, perhaps, says Neil Shankman. This tune is my fave. Reminds me of the calming fun we had watching The Joy of Zoning. Yeah, The Joy of Zoning is a different live stream that I was doing last year's Max Fun Drive. And guess what, everybody? I'm gonna do it again on Monday morning. Because on Monday, this time, we record Judge John Hodgman. And that's got to happen. Do the thing. There we go. That's got to happen. I got to record that podcast. That's why we're here. We're talking. Look, there are two things that are required to make the podcast go. One of them is your support during the Max Fund Drive, which is what this is. Friday, day five of the rest of your Max Fund Drive, March 22nd, 20. 24 max fund drive are the two weeks per year the 10 business days per spring where we do not drug you and put you into a wicker man and burn you no we simply ask you to do max we simply ask you to go to maximumfund.org and if you're able to become a member a supporting member at five dollars a month or a little more if you can or upgrade your membership or boost it you know, that's how we get money to make the podcast go. And it's not just me and Jesse, but it's producer Jennifer Marmer. It's video editor Daniel Spear. It's editor AJ McKeon. It's social media director Natty Lopez. And all the other podcasts and all the other employees of Maximum Fun, all the other employee owners. So that's condition one for keeping the Judge John Hodgman podcast a going. Condition two, do the thing. Doesn't want to do the, there we go. Condition two, I have to record the podcast. So the point is on Monday, uh, noonish time is when we record the podcast. So on Monday and Monday only next week, I will be doing my Max Fun Drive live stream in the morning at what do you want to say? 9 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, let's say 9 a.m. We can get we can do it. We can get up early. 
And I'm going to be playing SimCity 2013 on Monday morning. A reprise of the not very famous live stream, The Joy of Zoning, where I play live SimCity 2013 and I and we all just zone out on a Monday morning while I'm zoning commercial, residential, and industrial. And I do a little whispering like Bob Ross while we do it. It's a lot of fun. Put that on your calendars for Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern. I don't want to hear about any global time zones right now. And uh, and we're going to have fun then. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week, it'll be noon, 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 four times noon. What happens if I do this? Does that trigger anything? There's a new thing where certain gestures will trigger fireworks or balloons or whatever. I didn't ask for this, and this does nothing. Boo. It should be four fingers should do something. Tell me in the chat what four fingers should trigger. Folks in the chat want to know, where do the messages that show up in the live video come from? Well, they come right from the chat. Now, if you're watching this on the service formerly known as Twitter, if you're watching this on, uh, well, if you're watching this on the service formerly known as Twitter, I will not be able to see any of your comments. If you're watching this on Twitch, on the Judge John Hodgman Facebook group, on the Judge John Hodgman YouTube channel at Judge John Hodgman Pod slash streams, I will be able to see your comments as they come up or your chats, your chats as they come up, not your comments. If you're watching this over on Instagram live, uh, I can only see your comments if I, if I pop over, watch this. This is going to be intense. I figured out how to do it on Instagram Live, and this is going to be intense, I suspect. What's going to happen? There. Now we... Now we're in, we're in a different world. This is me with a delay. You can... I don't know if you can hear that the song cannot keep up with this. Let's stop the music. Let's fade it out. Bye-bye, daydreaming. We'll see you on Monday. Whoa. We're going into, we're going into a, a multiple mode here. That's what's happening over on Instagram. I believe that's on a little bit of delay. Hi, everyone. I'm going to comment over there. Over on the Instagram, katkatukatu says, I'm going to main to that candle pin bowling place. Thank you for candle pin bowling at Amanda's in Ellsworth, Maine. Maybe we'll get maybe we'll get Autumn from Amanda's candle pin bowling in Maine onto the live stream soon. All right, let's stop this sharing. This is a little bit too much. Too much. Uh, I also wonder what just the middle finger triggers. I'm not going to do it though. Uh, Twitch, but they're also streaming here on Facebook. Oh, that's a, you're, oh, you're answering your own questions. That's great. I'm going to mute myself for a second so I can cough. Thank you, everyone. My name, again, is John Hodgman. Uh, thanks for everyone who has joined. It is 1212 in the Eastern Time Zone. This is Let's Have Lunch at Our Desks Today, or Breakfast, or Tea, in honor of the hashtag MaxFunDrive. Uh, as you can see, I got the gory cam live a little later in the program. I will be reading to you the third of the three short Edward Gorey books that I purchased at auction as a, as a holiday gift to myself. This one is called the untitled book. It's a little bit different than the other ones we read, the deranged cousins in the 11th episode. And maybe we'll have. I want to thank the Edward Gorey Trust. Uh, the Edward Gorey Trust is an organization dedicated to earning the trust of Edward Gorey. No, it honors the creative and philanthropic legacy of Edward Gorey through preservation and promotion of his literary and artistic works and support of the animal welfare causes to which he was devoted. Because Edward Gorey, that person loved cats. 
and you can see, well, here's Gory again on the set of Dracula. He designed the, uh, and here he is covered with cats. That's what I wanted you to see. That's what I wanted you to see. Edward Gory covered in cats. Look at this incredible dude. <laughs> Edward Gory, if you don't know, is one of my favorite authors and illustrators and cat wearers. He died in, just before, I think in 19, when did he pass away? Let's, I should know this, April 15th, 2000. We're coming up on his, uh, or, or next year, February 22nd, will be his 100th uh, birthday. I miss him a lot, but he left behind dozens and dozens, if not scores, of absolutely bizarre, beautiful, weird, oddball, inscrutable, awe-inspiring, strange little books, including the one they're going to read later. The Untitled Book. But let's remove from stage and let's remind ourselves that we're here because of not this poster of David Reese, I'm always got it backwards, but this logo up here, the Max Fun Drive 2024. Oh, we've got a friend. We've got a friend in the waiting room. I see a friend. Oh, this is very good. This is very exciting. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see my best friend, Dan McCoy, in the waiting room. No, what? just kidding. It's Elliot. What? Elliot Kalen. what? You're all my best friends. Mm -hmm. Hi, sure. Elliot. Sure. How are you? Hi, John. How are you? Happy Max Fun Drive to you. Thank you. Happy Max Fun Drive to you. I Nothing makes me happier than to join, to start, to join your, your stream and see you talking about Edward Gorey. It just feels very, it just feels very on brand uh, in a way I that just, made me very happy. I've been thinking about Edward Gorey a lot this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, I don't know what triggered it. I just feel like you know, as my beard, as my own beard has gotten grayer. Now look, <laughs> no one's got a beard like Edward Gorey, no, right? Of no maybe one's got, maybe Samuel Delaney has a beard like Edward Gorey. Maybe. maybe Samuel Delaney, but no one's got. Let's just take a look, another look at that beard, shall we? <laughs> let's take another look at that beard. How about that? What an yeah, icon! Yeah, that's a great beard. That's like a that's like a czar's beard. That's an yeah. amazing one. Yeah. What a what an icon! What a don! In, in, in that last picture, it was hard to tell where his beard ended and the cat began. That's a successful <laughs> beard. That's, that's exactly right. He had he never lived with le fewer than six cats. I recently <laughs> learned, <laughs> and m most of the cats were like grandchildren, great grandchildren of cats that he had had for decades. Like it was a, Edward Gorey lived with his family of cats. Mm -hmm. And for the latter part of his life, he he lived only in Cape Cod. He lived in New York City where he fucking ruled. <laughs> like, do you have you ever seen this photo of Edward Gorey? And I'm sorry to swear in front of everybody. Yeah, please. You ever see this photo of Edward Gorey just ruling New York City? Uh, no. Let me see if I can find it for you. It was in his uh, obituary in the New York Times, and I'm, I'm loading it up right now for you. I've shown it on this feed before, but I, now that I know that you also like Edward Gorey Elliott, we got to talk about him a little bit. Sure. Right? The, I, I can remember the first time I was ever exposed to his work, which was seeing, as many people it was, I'm sure, the credit sequence for Master for uh, P and PBS's Mystery Series, now Masterpiece Mystery. That's right. But at the time, just mystery, right? It was just mystery. It was produced by the same team. Look at Edward Gorey just ruling New York City. That's amazing. This is in the wow. 70s. Let's go up close. <laughs> I would I love, wait, wait, if you can go over a little bit. The guy who is walking with his wife over there, yeah. that he is looking at Edward Gorey and he has a fur lined collar there, or maybe it's a scarf, but seeing yeah. Edward Gorey be like, I can't, I could never do that. That's too amazing. much. That's, yeah. He's it's looking at him envy. like, look at that weird freak. But what he's really thinking is, I wish I could be him. Yes. Exactly. Edward Gorey was never unafraid. He was never afraid to be himself. Yeah. Uh, it's just remarkable. And I mean, obviously the ethics of fur are very complicated. <laughs> but I'd like to think that those are all antique sourced furs. So those animals right. would have died long, long ago. You the know, that could be mastodon fur yeah, for all we yeah, know. That's right. Exactly so. It came out of the Arctic circle. <laughs> the ethics of fur is complicated, but the ethics of scarf, not complicated in this case. No, look at that. Amazing. Look at that. Incredible. Chunky knit scarf. <laughs> and here, sneakers always wore sneakers, as did many of the oddballs in his uh, in his illustrations. Yeah, for sneaking. 
And he lived in New York City for a long time and just ruled the scene. Do you know where he lived in New York City? What part of the city he was in? Uh, I absolutely do. Uh, let me access my memory, Edward. <laughs> uh, think about it for a second. Pay no attention to the clicky mechanical keyboard that I also bought myself for Christmas. New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering how closely he must might have lived to my grandmother, who lived in New York City at the same time. Let's let's see. He uh, da, 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 da. born in Chicago, early 1950s. No, not that's not the information we need. Da, da, no, no, that's not right. No, New York only. New York and New York Times, Gotham Bookmart. And when did he live in New Jack City? <laughs> when did he move from New York City to New Jack City? Uh, I think that that was. Wasn't it? New Jack City was also the name of the movie, right? Was yes, it right? New yeah. Jack Swing was the genre. Yes. Did Edward Gorey live? This is a very in clicky NYC? keyboard. It's it sounds great. It's the best. Yeah. Um, but, 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 the Edward Gorey House. He was a child prodigy. He was he, uh, is educated at Harvard. None of this is the information. Harvard, you know, yeah, I well, know. So that's some demerits you're giving him there from Harvard as a, as a Gailey. I, you know what? I'll look it up and I'll and I'll let you know later. He moved to New York City. I'm going to look it up too. I'm going to do can't... this. Nothing. There's not going to be nothing minute, more simply than two guys Elliot. looking up stuff. Elliot, Elliot, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. You and I, we're both Max Fun hosts, correct? Yes, that's true. We're, this is Max Fun Drive. Yeah, that's true. We, we should be talking to each other. Yeah, that's not true. Not clicking our keyboards, especially when we have an incredible chat group here who will totally look this up for us if we ask. That's true. And I've been able to find only a video on Facebook <clears> that says Edward Gorey's Apartment in New York City. It is video of the facade of the building. Okay. It doesn't, I can't see the address or the street or anything like I that. I don't think you can share that with me, but I mean, on no. this, but if you send, if you text me that photo, I'll What's share video? it. Text, just send me a link. <laughs> Why right. are you making this so hard? Send me a link. I don't, because I don't know how, I don't, I don't really know how, how, how uh, computer stuff works or technology stuff, you know. Stacy, oh, good old Stacy Mitchell, the Amphigory also book. That's the thing I was remembering yesterday. Has a drawing of him on the cover that looks like that jacket photo for sure. Oh. Uh, he had, you know what he, he looks three, like? He had three huge uh, 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 anthologies of his, of his work that really popularized him in the late seventies, early eighties among weirdos, suburban weirdos like me. The first was called Amphigory. The second was called Amphigory 2, T-O-O. -O, and I said in an earlier stream, I think that's the first time I've ever heard that joke, mm. T-O-O. -O, and then just tripled down on it. The third one was called Amphigory also. Like what a great iteration. I don't know if this is the case, but I like to imagine that there check was out kind Nicole, of- Check oh, out Nicole. 36 East 38th street. 36... What's the cross street? Nicole, do you know what the cross street is? Can you put uh, that in? I, can I guess we could look that up. 36 East. That's pretty, so that's not too 38, far. East, but 38 36. Street? Yeah. So that's that's not too far from Penn Station, right? No, it's it's almost like, uh, yeah, here. I'm going to Street View now. Okay, I'm going to do this and too. And I'm going to share it. Let me know if it matches your the video that you're saying you have. Wow. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that, that does look like the video. I'm not sure. I can't I, I'll have to look at the video again, which is too much work for me at the moment, but... So that's between Park Avenue. There it is. Oh. Yeah, so he's not that far from like Bryant Park. Okay, so he's not that close to my. He's not that far from the from Tudor City, where my aunt had an apartment for some time. Right. Between but he's Park? not. My grandmother lived on East Fifty Sixth Street, a little bit farther east, and uh, a couple right. blocks farther east. And, you know, between Park and Madison. Not that far from the Empire State Building. Walking distance to Writer's House. Should we make this, would it be, so bring up Max Fun Drive again. Should we be bad to ourselves again and create some stretch goal where you and I have to go to record a podcast outside of Edward Gorey's house? Yes. Is that, should yes. we do that? Yes. I was just thinking, I don't want this to be weird. It just so happened that I was thinking of you in the shower. Okay. This morning. That could be weird, but if you associate me with cleanliness, then that's not, that's not a bad thing, I guess. It just so happened. I it wasn't in the shower. Oh. I was so you, wait, you were at the shower, the but you shower. were thinking of me as if I was in. You were thinking about me being in the shower. That's more creepy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was thinking yeah. of you in the shower, like, um, like that scene from Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> you took your picture down from the wall. You were, you were looking through, or you that's wanted right. me to, to look through the wall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you don't know, but I do. I do have a private office full of taxidermy birds. I didn't know that. 
and and behind one picture i have a peephole mm -hmm. that weirdly connects with california where you live that's amazing yeah that's an astounding, that's even better than the when when john oliver and i had offices that were had split by one wall we talked a lot about big name uh, drop big name we, drop by yeah. the way let's just we, like, honor that big we, name drop. we talked a lot about cutting a hole in the who, wall and who 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 uh, the who? host of last week tonight john oliver uh, john this oliver was, this was back when we both worked on a show called the daily show with yes. john stewart a show that oh, wasn't on the I air remember. but has now come back yeah they did call me gandalf at that time <laughs> we we used to cut up we used to talk about cutting a hole in the wall and buying a used porthole from a ship and putting it in there so we could open it and talk to each other through the wall but <laughs> jedi monkey wants us to call the gory hole podcast gross <laughs> but it couldn't be grosser than me talking about thinking of you in the shower yeah, the point so was thinking, this morning yeah. this morning at some point in my daily ablutions i thought of my friend <laughs> elliot kalen and i said we got to do something we have we don't have anything planned yeah that's true and what i was saying to myself was l l let's do something as simple as a live stream or mm -hmm. a watch along you know yeah. what i mean yeah, that's a great idea. Because that time we promised a full new podcast on... <laughs> on a 13-episode television show? On a 13-episode television. It seemed like the easiest thing in the world to do. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, and and luckily it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it, it turned out great, I thought, but it was a bigger time commitment. That, and I remember you at the time, you, you said, you said, well, we've just talked ourselves into adding an unpaid job <laughs> to our lives. A full unpaid job. <laughs> We did, uh, and we and we stuck with it. Far you look at uh, Harry and Meghan; they were supposed to do a twelve episode podcast. I don't think they could even do three episodes, and they were paid mm -hmm. millions for that. We weren't paid millions; we're only paid a, in Max Fun jo uh, Max Fun Drive joining membership numbers. It's true. And we and we stuck out the whole the whole series. We beat, yeah. we beat out Harry and Meghan. Yes. <laughs> and let's be fair; we couldn't have done it without producer Jordan calling. Yes. Very We're speaking so, yeah. of the podcast, I, Podius, about the television show, I, Claudius, that Elliot and I did a few years ago. It's still available at Maximum Fun. It was so good that we couldn't keep it a members only thing. We had to release it. For yeah, real. it was too good. We were too great. Jordan did too amazing a job. It was too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, also, Janet Varney and I last year promised to do a whole podcast about the mottos of the states. That's 51 <laughs> episodes plus territories. Yeah. And um, and we've been doing it like it's going to happen. It's happening. We're going to release a chunk of them very soon. I just wanted to to let people know that Max you, Fun Drive you, promises are solemn. They get promises. filled. They don't always get filled quickly, but they get filled. Well, they fulfilled. Get, they get promises. fulfilled. Fulfilled, not filled. Fulfilled. This, Fulfil, fulfilled. They get yeah, fulfilled. Yeah. This morning as I was cleaning myself perfectly and thinking of my friend Elliot Kalen, I thought to myself, we need to do something. What could it be? What could be fun? Mm -hmm. And and sure enough, Elliot pops on here almost miraculously. Ooh. It's the the magic of Max Fun Drive. And and Edward Gorey has been my obsession for this whole year, on my whole life. But you know, especially this year. Especially this year, yeah. yeah. The same way I went. I uh, I last year. I mean, I've always loved Douglas Adams, but last year I went to it through an especially big Douglas Adams revival in my life. So for that sure. happens sometimes. Yeah. For sure. I mean, yeah, that could be that could be my 2025. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the thing is that if we wanted to see where Douglas Adams lived, we'd have to go to England. Yes. And you don't live in England. I, I live in New York. Yeah, I, my sister lives in England. I will be going to England to do a show on May 24th. I'll be doing two Flophouse shows in Oxford, England, May 24th. Oh, wow. But uh, that's very exciting. So if anyone watching this is in the UK, then come see us in Oxford, May 24th. Uh, but we're here talking about Max Fun Drive. But you live in New York. I go to New York relatively often because I have a lot of East Coast family. Yeah, it would make more sense to do something. We'll find in New York. a time. We'll find a time to go in, check out Edward Gorey's apartment, and I think we can get in there. Now, Carlin Crystal says it was a one-room apartment in New York, mm -hmm. which is something. That's really something. That seems like not enough room to hold Edward Gorey in the life that I imagine him having. I think that his life was up here. That's true. Yeah, you know I, mean? I can see that. You know, his life was up here, and at the New York City Ballet, he went to everyone, every really? ballet, everyone would not miss it. And then later in his life, he he decamped to Cape Cod, to the Edward mm -hmm. Gorey House in Cape Cod, where I've never been. Also, so m maybe if you've got the time, 
and we could go to the Evergory House in Canada. I would love to. I almost certainly don't, but I feel like we could. But I feel like there's a way to make that time. Yeah. You go. Oh, you can go. You can go to to Oxford to record a podcast and make money. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You can't can't abandon abandon (laughs) your family for several days to go on a a Edward Gorey pilgrimage with me. I often wish that I was a worse dad so that I could do that kind of thing. Like the way that you, you hear about, you know, great artists who are bad people who, where they're like, Oh, I need, I needed inspiration. So I fled to Italy for a few weeks, leaving the wife behind with the, with the children or like William William Shakespeare just left his family behind in Stratford and went to London for a long time. You know? Yeah. It's not, it's not a good thing to do. And sometimes I, I wish that I was as selfish and, and not as good a dad as I am so that I could. Your kids are both under 10 still? One is 10 and one is five. Oh, okay. So this is it. Or five and a half, as he tells me. There's never been a better time to be a bad dad, take it from me. Because <laughs> this is what's really going to make an impact. They'll remember it. That's yeah. the thing. They'll if I was feel... a bad dad when they were three, they might not remember it. Yeah. They'll feel really abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, it's a sad story. I mean, it's just like, I didn't realize, I thought that our kids could hack it, me going away, mm-hmm. particularly when our son turned 12. And I told him that I was going on tour and he was not happy about it at all. Yeah. They were much happier when they were littler. They didn't care about me at all. Mm-hmm. At all. Unfortunately, I bet your children have bonded with you. Uh, they, it goes off and on. <laughs> They've yeah. alternately bonded with me and don't want me to have anything to do with them, which is It was kids. so sad. It was That's so sad kids. when he was so sad that I was going on tour for Vacation Land. It made me so sad. That is sad. Yeah. It's a great book. But you said to him, this is a great book. People need to hear about it. I but, need to promote it. Yeah, but I mean, if you're in New York, where's the Edward Gorey house? Edward Gorey, Cape Cod house. Just accessing my personal memory. <laughs> That's the clicking sound of the gears of your mind turning. Yeah. It's in Yarmouth. How so, far is that? I don't know that you know the area far better than I do. Uh, how far is that from like, uh, how far is that train wise from New York? Well, yeah, you would have to take the train to providence rhode island and drive from there mm-hmm. there's no train that goes to cape cod it is it is it is right in it's not exactly in the um it's not exactly in this part of cape cod are you seeing this because i'm looking at the map can you see yeah. what i'm doing yeah with your shoulder okay. yeah like so here's cape cod uh-huh. in reverse on the map you would be looking at it i can't figure this out. i'll okay, take your here, word for it that it's so far cape away cod. here's cape cod uh-huh. right and here's boston mm-hmm. and here here uh, kind of in this nipple area. You no. Know, <laughs> up up here in the clavicle, this is Providence. Uh-huh. And Yarmouth is about here. Okay. Right here. Right near it's you know, this is in this is all Eugene Merman territory. <laughs> okay, you know that makes that? sense. Yeah. He's he, it's right it's right in, it's near Dennis. It's near Barnstable. It's near Hyannis. Okay. Uh, we could go see some Kennedys and go see the Edward Gorey house. I think, yeah, we'll have to figure out some way to make it work. I imagine Edward Gorey didn't have to worry about a train or driving because he would take some kind of like Wright Brothers style dirigible. Like there would be like kind of a big inflatable <laughs> balloon part, but there'd also be a propeller. It's just think, a wire frame that you sit in. I think you'd ride around on a wicker bicycle, don't you? <laughs> I could see that. Or a knit bicycle. Like that scarf. He probably has a bicycle like that. I could, I could drive us there. I have a car. I could drive us there. Okay. You know, I think that would be fun. I think that would that, be fun. But at the very least, like, hey, look, let's set some goals. Okay. All right. Let's set some goals. This is the Max Fun Drive. It's the two weeks out of the year when we, the hosts and producers and other members of the Max Fun family, encourage you to perhaps consider becoming a member of Maximum Fun, a supporting member. It starts at just $5 a month, right? But it's five dollars a month. Five dollars. That right. is, I, it is one modern day comic book, basically, plus a dollar per month. swack has got the PBS mystery theme stuck in his head or their head. There was gonna, no for me. We're going to be kid, hearing there, that later. Yeah, there was there was no bigger disappointment for me. Actually, that's not true. That one of the many big disappointments for me as a kid was watching that opening credit sequence and then watching the show that came afterwards and being like, "This is not. This is not have the." The spookiness Wait, we or a, style. We got to put credits. a pin in. We got to put a pin in that because we were doing. Oh, our, a, we were doing our maximum fun drive. Yeah. But we also have to put a pin in this. We have to. Oh, no, that's not it. Where? What happened to you, Stacy? Oh yeah. We have to make a heart 
with our screens. So we have to do each do up one of the one half of these. Okay. But we'll do that at the end. We'll, oh, Mike. I triggered some hearts. <laughs> I'm learning new things every day. Wow. Oh, wow. Amazing. That's how I feel that you're here. That's how I felt in the shower this morning. <laughs> it was very sweet and then it turned bad. <laughs> Anyway, we're doing our, our pitch. $5 a month to become a supporting member. Uh, that's uh, that's for the Judge John Hodgman podcast alone. That's a, a little bit more than a buck a show, maybe mm -hmm. a buck 25 a show. If you also listen to the Flophouse, that's, that's Elliot's podcast with Stu and Dan who were here yesterday. All of a sudden you're getting shows for 75 cents. Yeah, Ouch. that's that's that would be if you just listen to the flop house, five dollars a month would be a dollar twenty five an episode. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. But if you're listening to Judge Judge Hodgman and the flop house, right. that's sixty two cents an episode, pretty much. And wow, if you, you did the math. It, yeah, if you or sixty two and a half. And if you do listen to another podcast on top of that, Jordan Jesse Go or when the Mini, or the Beef and Dairy Network, any any number of the podcasts on, on Max Fun. Any or, of the new podcasts, you know, Valley yeah. Heat, Sound Heap. Yeah. Then uh, you're then you're paying nickels or dimes for each episode of the podcast which is nickels fantastic or dimes. nickels or dimes and and more to the point you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you are supporting a, a employee-owned cooperative uh that uh produces in uh, creator-owned podcasts uh there's no other company like it and um thanks to you max fun has been able to thrive not merely survive but thrive Mm -hmm. during a period of time when a lot of podcasts are getting canceled a lot of podcast networks are that were acquired by big vc money is uh is going away the yeah. fact that max fund is a cooperative means that that cannot happen it will not happen we we don't we are the you know, shows you love are not at risk of being purchased by a big company and then the big company being like mm, this is better as a debt leverage instrument yeah. than as a an entertainment company we're and never going to get everybody. coyote versus acme no. For those of you who read Deadline.com and know what that means. And for those who don't, you're you're better off. But the but yeah, the, the, but do you want to explain what that is, or should I explain what that is? No, let's not explain what it is. It's okay. too depressing and it's off topic. That's true. But all, and, and if it, you're helping keep the network alive, and in a very real sense that I'm very grateful for, you're helping keep me and my family alive because the, the entertainment industry right now is going through a bad place. And right. Your support, your member support for the flop house and for Max Fun in general, but mainly for the flop house because that's where I get money. For the flop house means that I can pay my mortgage. It means that like I, we can we can cover our bills. Like I feel very lucky that I have this podcast that is allowing me to meet my financial daily needs because it's hard to get a job right now in television. And felt like the, the uh, I'm getting comic book work, but that doesn't that doesn't pay television rates, and so. Same, it, 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 same deal. Yeah. At the, as soon as the strike was over, I contacted my agents and I said, Hey, I know, I know you probably haven't heard this from any of your acting clients, but I would love to act. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I would love to audition for anything. Mm -hmm. And they scheduled a call to talk to me. And I'm like, this is great. We're going to talk about what I want to do. And they basically said, don't get your hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Nothing very all nothing is happening, and the few things that are happening, you have to be the most famous person in the world. It may, it may, I, very, I, the, I was reading, the, the, I was reading an article about the stuff that Mattel is trying to make into movies, and they're like, yeah, well, these famous novelists are all working on treatments, and this famous actor is also writing one. And I was yeah. like, well, if they're taking these jobs, if they need to take these the jobs, actors and no are jobs writing. For, what hope is there for us? Well, like, the answer is. Maximum uh, fun. Maximum fun, exactly. Well, let's not get too into inside baseball. Some people have real jobs. That's true. Some people have real jobs, including <laughs> baseball. That's a real job. Nice work if you can get it. I can't. It's. I mean, I would say that's an even harder job to get uh, say, yeah. than the ones we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. But, we're going to stop the begging in a second. But the point is that if you listen to either Elliot's podcast, my podcast, any of the Max Fun podcasts, and you enjoy them, and you're not yet a member, this is a great time to think about maybe mm -hmm. becoming a supporting member because 70% of our operating income comes from listener support, people like you. It really, really matters. And becoming a monthly member helps us plan out our year and helps us 
grow as a network and as a podcast. We added video to our podcast this year. We hired a video editor, Daniel Spear. That's because of you and the Max Fun Drive. Not you, Elliot, but everyone else. Well, no, maybe no, you. You, I'm a, I'm, I'm a I am a member. member. Yeah. I am a Max member, and I contribute yeah. to Judge John Hodgman. That's, but, you're one I'm of the a Max Fund member, to. and I contribute to the Flop House. Aw, thank you. Well, that's the that's other thing. If you become a member, you might not know if you started listening, but like when you go to MaximumFun.org slash join, you'll get a chance to like pick which podcasts you listen to and where you want to direct direct your max funds mm -hmm. if there's a podcast you hate you don't have to support that one if there's a podcast you love you do get to support that one and it makes you feel good because you know you're supporting them support maximum fund to stop john Audrin becoming a shortstop it's true thank you baldy three on twitch if it weren't for maximum fund i might have to pursue a career in professional baseball you might have to take one of those one of those blue collar day jobs as a professional baseball shortstop neil shankman says either of us could be a would be a credible catcher only for short periods of time. My son is a baseball fanatic, and I often have to be a catcher so he can practice his pitching, and I can only squat for so long. So, uh, long thank you, Clash Pan Blandicoot. Pretty funny name. It's <laughs> a great name. Long time Max Fun supporter is still a huge bargain for the amount of joy I get from the podcast I listen to. Absolutely. Snap. Does that trigger any? Nope, nothing. What about this? Does this trigger anything on? Do I get birds? Yeah, you get birds. Thank you. That's no. I think you used up your hearts. Again? There, we there go. you did. You got it. I'm not doing the math, but I listen to a whole lot of Max Fun Podcasts. Had to bump myself up. Oh, to Silver Wow. Seagull. Speaking of birds, yes. Yes, That's Elliot, amazing. you got a Thank bird. You. you got a Silver <laughs> Seagull right there. Oh, the best kind. Thank you so much, Zafod BB84. Hey, Douglas Adams reference right there. Here. Mm -hmm. uh, here here's a little. Here's a no, little. no, the BB stands for BB Newworth. It doesn't stand for Beeble Brox. That's oh, the <laughs> I didn't understand. Zafod BB Newworth, yeah. <clears throat> uh, thanks for asking, Jedi. No. <laughs> Just thought I would ask two media subscriptions I have, Max Fun and Defector. Mm -hmm. Love the co-op series we all did when we interviewed other cooperative media groups. That's excellent. I don't know what Defector is, but it sounds cool. It's a website. I think they're also co-op, yeah. And Twitch Please says, I just subscribed to Sound Heap, a brand new Max Fun podcast. It's really fun. Featuring a friend of Beef and Dairy Network, John Luke Roberts. I hope that not only Twitch Please you subscribe, but you've considered becoming a member. It, when you become Maximum a member... Fun. It supports the shows you love, and it also gives them the resources to start those new shows. You are you are helping to create new shows that may become your new favorites. Hopefully, you don't like them more than the Flophouse and Judge John Hodgman. But they 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 the funding, like John said, seventy percent comes from supporters. The other thirty percent comes from maritime salvage. That and we're running low on that. Yeah, <laughs> they, they that's did. True. They, they did find a galleon off the coast of New England that had some gold in it. But that gold runs low. It's, it's a, a bit, yeah. There's a big period of contraction in the shipwreck salvage industry <laughs> yeah, right now. I call up my I call up my maritime salvage agents and I say, "Get me on a ship. I'll do anything. I'll be in the submersible." They say, "There's nothing going on right now." Our household contributes to Max Fun. I forget to download the bonus stuff. I still think it's worth it. I never know where to put the pins, but they look great. Put them on your lapel. That's my suggestion. John, what does your pin look like this year for the $10 a month level? What it has your... a it has a gavel. Uh-huh. I could show you a picture, but I have to reenact it. Okay. It has a gavel on it. And the gavel's the gavel's a banging like this. Mm-hmm. And then it has a thing that says friend of the court on it. Nice. Because if you if you subscribe to Max Fun and you become a member uh at the appropriate level and you get the lapel pin. Uh, you get to choose which one you want from which show you want. And if you do that, you are definitely a friend of the court. That but, is more sensible than the Flophouse pin, which is a picture of Werner Herzog. And it says, with a word balloon that says, I'm a bad little boy, which is which is <laughs> what he says on our podcast. <laughs> Neil Shangman has blown it up in the chat with the, with the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not references. Oak Island money isn't easy to get. I'm talking about searching for treasure. Stacey mm -hmm. Mitchell, James Cameron's cornering the market, et cetera. Yeah, unfair. 1% taking all the maritime salvage money, for sure. Thank you, Stacey. Put your pins in your cool Gen X denim jacket. You know where your pin should go? On the lapel of your members-only jacket, because <laughs> you are. It's only for members. <laughs> uh, did you hear that, Dan? That was a good joke, huh? right? <laughs> does that alarm you, Elliot? I, I wasn't going to join again today because i was here yesterday uh when there were arguably too many people uh considering that stuart just started painting one of his models but then i saw it was just you people guys love that, though. So. It's, just love to, that. it's just us today and, and a little later on we're going to invite some people in the chat and other listeners and max fun family mm -hmm. friends to uh to join us in the conversation i just want to point out 
Clash Blandicoot says, I've been working on my mental and physical health recently, listening to John Moe's podcast. Depression Mode has been a big part of that. Max Fun is the best shows all under one roof. I agree. Thank you, Clash. I, we got we to gotta give a shout out to John Moe doing the, be, the best mental health podcast in the biz. And an incredible podcast called Sleeping with Celebrities, where people do boring stuff. Where they talk about boring stuff and you fall asleep to it. Mm-hmm. Dan, we've already we've already blown we've done so many talking points for the Max Fun Drive. I'm sick of it, frankly. What did you yeah, do? Yeah, you came too late. What did you do today, Dan? Uh, I was sitting here uh, uploading the podcast uh, tomorrow's podcast on Madam Web, and uh, what you mean to tomorrow? Background. List for Max Fun listeners will get to hear our Madam Web episode with special guest Jubin Parang. That's true. The yeah. head writer of the Daily Show with the uh, uh, he's a co EP now. Co executive producer of the Daily Excuse Show. Excuse me, that's right. He was, I he was promoted. So we're and we're talking the the hit hit movie of of the year, Madam Web. <laughs> I, when Dan Web said I was well. just here uploading our episode on Madam Web, I thought Madam Web was what he called the World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going let to me, now. Let me log into Madam Web and see. What... <laughs> What does Madam Web have for me today? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know, I know that I done. I said I was done with the begging, but I just also have to shout out. Stop podcasting yourself. Mm-hmm. Another, another banger. Another one. In the yeah, words, in the podcast. words of DJ Khaled, another one. They're all bangers. <laughs> they're all icons. They're all dons. So Dan, you upload? Uh, did did you upload successfully? Uh, as far as I know, yes. I had some uh, roast pig. From New Yi Lee, a local. Whoa. Is that a necessary part of the process of uploading the episodes? Uh, <laughs> no, but it's just you know what I did to, like, today has been mostly yeah. uh, Max Fun hey, related. Hey, El- hey Elliot! Genuinely. Hey Elliot! Don't. He was just telling me what he did today. Yeah, man. No, I was you just confused because I mean? you asked him. You asked him if he had uploaded the episode, and he said, "Oh, I had some roast." Let's take a little, take a little break from Elliot for a second. <laughs> oh yeah. wow! Elliot, don't go anywhere. We'll come back to you. But I just feel like, Dan, you just talk about what you did today, and that's fine. That, that, you know, that was a flashback oh, just now to uh, we had Hallie on the show. Yeah. And ha- at one point, Hallie said, you know, you guys are really mean to Dan. And I felt my heart melt. Uh, nothing better than than Hallie uh, just, like, jumping in with a little concern for everyone's emotional well-being. Uh, but honestly, I love, that, I love that episode, and and sometimes sometimes uh, we can be a little bit mean to Dan. I confess, I've been a little bit mean to Dan in my time. <laughs> uh, I apologize. I mean, we all you know we all go with that arc with John Hodgman. <laughs> Pardon me, I came back from the Joko cruise with not COVID, but something similar in the effect on me. Yeah, some people got some people got a little a little cold on that Joko cruise. Yeah, I was but, coughing. But there was, I mean, I don't know of any COVID cases, and um, mostly everyone had a great time. And I came back healthier than ever. <laughs> I thought I had, I thought I had Bring gotten rid of it. I, 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 you missed, I missed my moment to refer to the the illness you get on the Joko cruise as Joe COVID. Nice. Oh, it's not nice. Oh, <laughs> watch it. Watch uh, it really. I mean, I think we're we're gonna I think we're gonna miss Elliot here in a second though, because I really haven't done anything of note today. So. All right, here's Elliot back. Oh, thanks, Dan. Let me ask you a question. Does Edward Gorey mean anything to you? Yes, yes. Really? Uh, my brothers. My, I have two older brothers. They introduced me to. I they had my brother John had both of the Amphigory collections, and of course, um, the old mystery PBS mystery opening. We've been talking about this a long time. Should we just watch it? Perhaps. I mean, there isn't a very good one on YouTube, but there is one on YouTube. And they and they the new PBS masterpiece mystery they messed they mushed it up like they they have like filters over the over the animation. It's not as it's not what as fun. What do you fun. mean? It's no good. They like they have they added. Um, it's kind of like this is a not the best way to describe it. But it's like how the Marvel movies opening used to have images from the comics, and then they were like, "eh, we'll do the same thing, but we'll have images from the movies." Like they kind of mm. I think tried to jazz it up and gussy it up a little bit to make it look. Uh, a little different, and instead, it lacks, it lacks the elegant clarity of the original. Oh, really? This at least the a, last time I saw it. This is a version that seems okay. I don't know why I'm getting. I'm going to let the ads go by first before I. Here we go. Only Skip. Max Fun Drive ads on this stream. Uh, all right, let's see how this goes. Oh, and I'm going to share. So if people don't know, there there is a Masterpiece Theater 
had a spinoff called Mystery! Exclamation point. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was hosted originally by Vincent Price and then by Diana Rigg. And then by Elvira. The, the, the British that? Vincent. Oh, wow. Time. Elvira hosted it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Elvira. They're trying yeah. to sex it up. <laughs> Ooh, I want a sex mystery up. <laughs> Color me bad. Duh, duh. <laughs> anyway. Was, that was when PBS was hiring Color Me Bad for all the, for all the theme songs. Ooh. I want to, are you being served? And <laughs> Ooh, antiques roll show. <laughs> anyway, it was the late seventies. Edward Gorey was the king, the king, the monarch of New York and Cape Cod, and goth kids everywhere. And they got uh, Edward Gorey to design this animation and this incredible theme song, which I think you'll be able to hear. Let's see. Share screen. Mystery intro. I'm going to give it a press play. I can hear it. Yeah. You can't see it? You can't, can't see, see it. it. I heard a lot of, I heard, I heard this. Oh, the I know what's going sounds. on. I forgot to press share. <laughs> Sorry about Classic that. Classic blunder. Here we go. Now, can you see this? Can you see that freeze frame? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, lightning. All right. Now, you should be able to hear it. Let's see what happens. Mystery is made possible by a grant from Mobile Corporation. that open window or that one lit window and Vincent the... Price's box of teeth <laughs> oh, I don't want to I don't want I, an I, ad for that the I, the two things that I, the person who was, who's on the like plinth lying down on the plinth that's the image that always struck me for some reason but I love the idea that mobile corporation is like you know what Let's get our name out there. Let's promote a uh, a PBS show, classy. We'll be associated with sophisticated stuff. And they're like, uh, your name is on kind of a funerary urn. And then a kind of pterodactyl monster flies out of it and screeches at the viewer. And they're like, what? Yeah. Literally a call from the grave from all dinosaurs that you are using to fuel cars in the United <laughs> yeah. States. I just remembered, I don't know whether this will be able to be seen very well over the thing, but I did this. Uh, I did this. Hang on. Let's make, it, let's make you big. Themed, uh, of scattered oh. lorries, yeah. Um, but uh Dan, you're you're, <laughs> you're an illustrator and that, that you made that with your hand. That was all cross hatching by your own. Yeah, Dan's an extremely yeah. talented Damn. illustrator. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh ex I almost removed you from the stage by accident. <laughs> That's well, well, I I apologize, guys, that I have to remove myself from the stage because I have something that I have to get Wait, to. Wait, do you have time to listen to me read the book? It only take a couple of minutes. Uh how many minutes? Well, you start, and if I run out of time, I'll just leave. How dare Awkwardly. You. I'll go I'll back away digitally. You know what? See you later. Wow. I love you, Elliot. Oh wait, Elliot, we have to do the hearts. Hang on, Dan. We gotta let's we'll see if we can get Bring me back for a second. Dan, I'm just gonna remove you for one second. Yeah, I'm just gonna... so we can... Oh no, now the glory cam is in between. All right, now no, I gotta do it this way. I can't. It's because it's reversed. I'm so bad at it. All right, I'm there. Okay. Kind of. Come on. Almost. Well, this is when I discovered that my hand is malformed. No, well, you're doing a great job. No. No, you I, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. There should be some at some part of my hand that this will work with, but none of them are. No, that's it. That's the way you do it. So do, okay. all right, do like, do this. 
Okay. No, tighten tighten up your tighten up your uh, index finger. Curl Which that a little that? bit more. This one? Which your, one's your that? Pointer. Oh, there that one. Go. Yeah. Tighten, tighten that up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And now point your thumb down further. Okay. And then move it in. There. Get that screenshot. That's as good as it's going to get, Stacy. <laughs> Sorry. Bang. Elliot, I love you. In and out of the shower. Bye bye. <laughs> John, that's, I don't know what that was, but okay. Bye. See you at Edward Gorey's house. All right. And now we're back again. Uh, all right. We're going to read some Edward Gorey, Dan. I'm I'm sad that Elliot left because there is a video that I wanted to share with him and you both, but only you're going to get it. All right. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll do my best to. But we'll do yeah, that as, a, as well. it's, an, uh, it's an Edward Gorey video that I had never seen before. But right now we're just going to read this book. So I'm going to add this to the stage. And I'm going to do it. How am I going to do it? Not like that. That won't work. 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 I think I'm just going to have to make it solo. But Dan, you're still with us. Okay. So if you talk, okay. people will be able to hear you. So do you, you want, if you want to mute yourself, that's fine. This is called The Untitled Book. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> just to be, oop, hi. Just to be clear, <clears throat> if people hadn't watched this before, uh, uh, one of my favorite Edward Gorey's books is called The Deranged Cousins. And uh, I saw just before Christmas, um, thanks to the uh, Edward Gorey Trust, uh, a, a, char a charitable group dedicated to Edward Gorey philanthropism and cat care. Uh, they, they alerted me on their Instagram account that, and everyone that there was a big uh, auction of Edward Goryana going on and a private collector was selling a bunch of their stuff, including first editions, a uh, first edition of the deranged cousins. And it came, um, it came as a pack of three little books. This is the Deranged Cousins. And then another one was called The Eleventh Episode, which we read yesterday. And the three of them came in this envelope from the Fantod Press. Three books by Edward Gorey. Stacy asked, do I have many first editions? No, I'm not a first edition collector, but I needed to have this. And very much to my surprise, I was able to get it. And it's one of my prized possessions, and that's why I handle it indelicately every day for you, the Max Fund uh, Drive supporters and Max Fund listeners. Uh, so this final one, this is the one we haven't read, and it's called The Untitled Book. So here we go. So we'll lay it. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to move this over here. Sorry, Perry. There we go. That's better. This one's a little this one's a little weird. The Untitled Book by Edward Gorey. Uh, or it's by Edward Pig, one of his many pseudonyms, and it's signed, I'm very excited to say. This is probably the last time I ever take this out. This first edition of the Untitled Book in brackets is limited to 526 copies. 26 of these copies are lettered and signed by the author. This one is definitely signed. I don't understand what it means to say that it's lettered, because this is definitely printed. And this edition is copyright 1971, 41 West 47th Street. Gotham Book Mart isn't there anymore. And this is in re remembrance of Bradford and Clifton Clifford Simpson. Hippity whippity. Oxyboric. Flappity flippity. Sarah Gasham. Fip. Fap. Thu. Thumblebee Stumblebee
ipse fendus Rambleby Rumbleby Quagenzacher Hip Hop and you don't stop. Who? The End. Also published by the Fendon Press, The Beastly Baby, The Nursery Freeze, The Pious Infant, The Evil Garden, The Inanimate Tragedy, The Chinese Obelisks, The Osbic Bird, Donald Has Difficulty, The Deranged Cousins, and The 11th Episode. There you go, everybody. That's, the, that's it for the, the three Edward Gorey books that I got. Well, let's get rid of this Gorey cam. Remove from stage. What do you think about that, Dan? Good or bad? Uh, I mean, I love it. It's more impenetrable than even a lot of his stuff. But uh, I, that was one I was unfamiliar with. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a minor one. Hey, I'm going to invite uh, you. It's just coming up at the one o'clock hour here in the Eastern Seaboard. Um, supposedly, I have a Judge John Hodgman uh, meeting. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just going to say, you know what? I I love Jennifer and Jesse. But I'm going to go ahead and, oh, wait a minute. Just getting to the office. We'll start up the Zoom very shortly. I just don't want to let Jennifer know that I'm I'm live streaming. So I will join you in a bit. Maybe. Maybe I'll skip the meeting. <laughs> maybe I'll skip the meeting and hang around with you guys. I mean, that would be pretty wild. Maybe we can get Jennifer and Jesse to join. Yeah, get them hey, in here. What if, what if you want to join uh, a person out there? It's very easy. Uh, all you have to do is oops, save that. There we go. All you have to do is put bit.ly slash JJ Hojo, JJ Hojo for Judge John Hodgman join uh, into a browser. If you're on a laptop, do it on Chrome. If you're on an Android uh, device, do it on Chrome. If you're on an iOS device, like an iPhone or an iPad, do it on Safari, won't you? Won't you do it on Safari? <laughs> and priority goes to any members of the Edward Gorey Trust that were so nice to uh, promote this stream in their Instagram account. Uh, meanwhile, what? well, while you were reading that, uh, yeah, Audrey me. Audrey wandered into the room, looked shocked at what I was doing, yeah. and uh, wandered out. So I'm going to jump off and see what my wife needs. But uh, oh, all right. Well, thank you very I, much, Dan. I'm sorry for abandoning you. I figured that if you're going to bring uh, guests and you'll have someone else to to speak with, and they'll be. Well, there's uh, no one in the waiting room, so it's just going to be me. But that's fine. No I can handle it. I can do it solo. No one else? Come on. Someone ask. Someone ask. So. Someone will. They're typing it in. It's not easy to work your way into the waiting room. It takes a little bit of typing on your device. But I I have no doubt that we'll have some we'll have some fun before I have to sign off for the Judge Sean Hodgman Weekly Meeting. Um, so I'll talk to you later, Dan. Great to see you. Oh, so Dan is one of the tri hosts of the flop house. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, one of our favorite, uh, one of my favorite podcasts in the world. And it just so happens to also be a maximum fun podcast. And, um, uh, uh Elliot and I already, already gave the hard sell. We yeah. already gave the hard sell, but I mean, look at it. Look at this guy. Look, this guy's making, uh, you do a regular flop house. You talk about a, you talk about a bad movie every week, right? Yes. And, uh, the, the four, 420th episode will be Madam Web. We did not Ooh. do any weed content, I just realized. Oh. Uh, but Why? Uh, does that number have something to do with weed? I just think it's a cool number. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of the better ones. You know, it's a pretty pretty little number. But uh, perhaps uh, something that would help you watch Madam Web. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Lumi Labs, one of our sponsors. Anyway, uh, MaximumFun.org slash join. MaximumFun.org slash join. You also put out uh, mini episodes. Mm -hmm. So how often does the uh, regular episode come out? How often does a mini come out? Now it's, uh, it, it alternates. So two so it's week regular over episodes, week. two mini episodes. And the mini episodes kind of rotate uh, who's in charge of them, whether it's me or Elliot or Stuart. And we kind of make a point of not really telling each other what the theme is going to be. Uh, so that's kind of fun. We spring 
these sort of oddball premises on one one another. And it's a really funny and wonderful podcast about three friends, two of whom are often mean to you. Yeah. And uh, hey, let's not let's not have Dan be abused for nothing. <laughs> Maximumfund.org slash join. Help pay his rent and uh, and you know, help and help out the podcast that you love. Dan, it was great to see you again. Come by. Good to see you every day. I'm not doing it over the weekend. Okay. On Monday morning, I'll be live streaming. I'll be playing SimCity 2013 in the morning. The Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm going to be doing the live the regular live stream at noon Eastern time. And also, I will save the Edward Worre video that I wanted to share with you in, until such time as you and Elliot can come back, because I think you would really enjoy it, what, this one. Okay. It's, El, it's, it's, it's Edward Gorey talking about what he watches on television. Yeah, let us know. I would it's love really to see great. that. It's terrific. Don't look it up on YouTube, everybody. I... Wait. All right. Bye, Dan. I'll see you later. Bye. Amy, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you uh, a listener to uh, Max? I'm Fun? a $10 a month uh, subscriber. And I was the one who was saying the other day that I should upgrade to 20 because I went to the uh, meetup in Brooklyn yesterday. Oh, and I oh that's incredible. You, we have a live report from the Maximum Fun meetup at Minnie's Bar. It's Stu's Bar, Stu and Charlene's Bar, Stu being the third member of the Flophouse. And you went to it. Yep, and Stu and Dan were both there. And wow. they're lovely people, and I had a great time. And everybody was listening, all the podcasts they listened to. And I think I listened to yeah. twice as many of them. Wow. And I feel like I'm splitting my funding too much. So oh, I, I feel like I should upgrade to 20 so that it's fair. Look, Amy, that's <laughs> really, that's, first of all, nothing is fair. Well, obviously, life's not fair. That's what, you know, the novel, The Princess Bride, yeah. <laughs> says. That's life's, life's not fair. And the fact of the matter is, you being a $10 a month supporter just means the world to us. And I'm not certainly not going to stop you from doubling your support if for whatever reason you want. But just know that you already have 100% of my thanks <laughs> for supporting Maximum Fund. That really means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Wow. And you and do you live was it a long trek to get to Sunset Park? No, I live in downtown Brooklyn by the courthouse. So Ooh, all right. It's, it's the R train, which is a pain. I actually go to a science fiction reading series, which is at an in industry city on sure. uh, so I was already there this week already. That's super cool. What are you reading in the sci-fi reading series? Um I, it's a like people come and they read live, um, like their work and stuff like that you know, like published authors and stuff like that. Hang on. I just need to send a message to Jennifer saying, if you want me to join the Judge John Hodgman weekly meeting, you have to drag me out of here. <laughs> Come and drag me out if you want me to join you. We'll just see. Um, what? Uh, sorry, it's a, a it's a reading. See, it's a reading series. There's like a whole bunch of science fiction reading series in the city. So it's not like a book club where you're all reading. No, a book together. okay. Honestly, I'm a book reviewer, so I have more oh. books than I know what to do with at right. this point. So yeah, I reviewed your uh, audiobook narration of Dimension of Miracles for Locus like oh, several wow. years ago. Thank you. And I keep wishing you would do more books. I wish Neil Gaiman would bring that series back. It was a great series. The the classic uh, uh, Neil, SF works. Yeah. Neil Gaiman partnered with Audible to bring into audiobook format a bunch of classic science fiction that had not been adapted to science fiction before books, that is to say. And uh, and I I read at, at Neil's request a book called Dimension of Miracles by oh boy it's escaping me do you Shack, remember robert shackley robert shackley yeah that's right um a, a kind of you know we were talking about um hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy with elliot a little earlier this hour and um shackley kind of is an, was an american author i believe yes yes he was but he his... kind of pioneered that semi-absurdist uh, uh comedic science fiction that douglas adams worked in and perfected in his own way yes that's definitely true and yeah, I'd love to do more audiobooks, so maybe I ought to talk to somebody about that because that's a lot of fun. Although the vocal strain is real. The VR no, real. I'm sure I have a lot of <clears throat> friends who are audiobook narrators, and it seems like yeah. a really intense kind of job. It's it's really and you really it's like um you know when you say a word over and over and again it starts to lose meaning? 
<laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, and you just, that's what reading an audiobook is like a little bit. You kind of go into a weird fugue state. But, uh, I wish uh, Kate wants to re release the Neverwhere. Oh, we got a lot of questions about Neil Gaiman. I got I to talk to Neil Gaiman a lot of things. But, but here's studies for reporters saying the meetup at Minis was great. No, it was a lot was of fun. Great. Everybody how, was lovely. How late did you stay? 4 a.m.? No, I mean, because I have a day job, I, uh, like, I think I left at around 10 30, 11, maybe. Good for you. Very um, responsible. Well, you know, I mean, you can't actually make a living from book reviewing, so I have to have a day job. Where do you review the books? I review for Kirkus. I have had oh. an audiobook column for Locus. Oh. Um, I also write for a digital platform which you would know what an nda says and you wouldn't really want me to buzz market it's not got audible it. but it's a big one got it um, no problem and i just started doing a little bit for oprah daily wow that's amazing so yeah i mean science fiction's why you and i actually also have an acquaintance in common oh yes uh, go on nora jemison cuz i know oh, you're a big fan nk jemison uh nk jemison is is nora's uh uh, that's the yes. name that, that Nora writes under, um, but all, but known in real life as Nora Jemison, who I met at the Jonathan Colton cruise some years ago. And yeah, we, she and her know, roommate Danielle told me a little bit about about that. So, uh, and then we met again when I hosted the uh, the Nebula Awards in Chicago uh, some years ago too, which was a real exciting time for me. I really enjoyed doing that. I I read a lot of books that I might have missed otherwise and loved them. It's she's some exciting a great stuff is happening yeah. in science fiction and fantasy right yeah. now. Yeah, she's a great writer. She used to read for the New York Review uh, of Science Fiction Reading Series, um, you know, back when she was just publishing sh um, short stories. And, yes. you know, she's definitely one of those. I knew her when, and I just, I'm thrilled that she's had as much success as she's had. She's incredible. The last time I saw her, she was walking the picket line during the writer's strike, which was terrific. She also, she like hosted selected shorts recently. I saw, surprised. I saw a thing. Oh, you have to read uh, The City We Became and the, yeah. the sequel. They're so, so good. And if you live in New York, they're such New York books. Hang on a second. I'm sorry, Amy. What, what is it? What do you want? I don't John, want to come to the a, meeting. We have a 10 a.m. meeting that you're 10 minutes late for, John. It's I'm time having to fun talking to our, Amy. No, John, people can go to MaximumFun.org slash join without you. Right now, we have to have a meeting. What about Will? Look at Will here. Will wanted to talk to me, and he hasn't even had a chance to. That's true. Hi, it, Will. That's what I say. Shut your pie hole, Will. <laughs> Not my pie hole. Uh, Judge Hodgman and I have to have a meeting. Oh, I'll turn sideways. How about that? <laughs> what, do we, what can we talk about that's more important than talking directly to our listeners about the Max Fund Drive? Uh, talking directly to our producer about the max fun <laughs> well where why don't you bring her in let's have the meeting right here why not transparent you know let's like, uh, uh, let's have it out in the sunshine she's sunshine in the, is the best she's in studio b i can see her here look you can see her on my <laughs> whoa hi jennifer wow are you in at max fun hq right now she's at the office i'm not oh. i'm in my house you're at your house right but yeah. Neither, neither of which things would be made would be possible without the Max Fund Drive. To be honest, <laughs> it's true. And you All know right. what else? Without the Max Fund Drive, what would he do? There we oh. go. Look at Junior. Oh, he says, so "I sweet. need kibble." All right. Look, <laughs> Will. We're gonna. I'm gonna take one minute to learn about as much about Will as I can. I accept. Will. Where, wh what basement are you calling from today? <laughs> I'm from in the basement of Max Fund headquarters. Um, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. No, wow, uh, I'm at my house in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I live here with my wife and our three cats, which is sometimes one too many cats. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a Max Fund supporter, uh, have been for a long time. I remember the days when you guys sent actual food to people. Oh, yeah. I used to, for those who don't know, uh, I used to cook at the office. I used to bake at the office. And if people joined at the, I believe it was the $35 a month level, I would make blondies for you and we would <laughs> package them up and mail them. But we realized we were spending so much money mailing them uh, that we were like losing all the money that we otherwise were earning from members upgrading. So we, we had to stop. Also, I could only bake so many blondies. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Well, there you are. And let me ask you a question, Will. Yes. How, how old is that hot water heater behind you? Oh, boy. Uh, we rent. So I'm here to tell you, I don't know. Sometimes it makes the most horrifying sound. I just learned that you're supposed to re re replace your hot water heater every every 12 years. Ooh. And uh, I'm just wondering if that's real or if that's just something big hot water heater wants me to believe to buy a new one. That's a that's an excellent question. I have no idea. Well, that's the beauty of renting. You don't have to give a, you don't have to give a feces. That's true. I'm going to put googly eyes on it. So when it makes the terrible noise, it doesn't scare me so bad. <laughs> don't be don't be scared. Everything's going to be fine. What does the noise sound like, though? Maybe I can um, it for you out of out of nowhere. It will just give a single very loud clang. Oh, that's just the water heater ghost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's just the hammers. You know what that is? That's just the merman that they put in for, inside of every little water, every water heater. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. probably fine then. If, yeah, if it's still no, making the fine. noise, they're still alive in there. So yeah, that's right. He's fine. He's just saying more krill, please. That's what he means, <laughs> krill. Oh. All right, Amy and Will and everyone and all the ships at sea. Jesse's making me go to a meeting. I guess that's how this <laughs> podcast how podcasts get made that sometimes there are meetings right jesse that's true sometimes there are meetings once a week specifically and we had to talk to jennifer marmer our producer whose salary is paid by the maximum fund drive so please everybody before we go why don't you tippy tap your keyboards over to maximumfund.org join one more time or send that link to a friend or buy a gift membership or do whatever you can to help support the Maximum Fun Podcast, the Maximum Fun Network of Podcasts that you love, all creator owned and an employee owned cooperative, blah, 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 blah. You know what it's all about. Just do the right thing today if you can. We're going to take a break over the weekend. I will be back with a live stream on Monday morning at 9 a.m. I will be playing Sim City and then noon every day the rest of the week. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll say bye bye to Amy. Remove some stage. Bye bye to Will. Remove from stage. And bye bye, Jesse. I'll see you soon. I'll be in that meeting right away. Just kidding. I'm never going to go to that meeting you cannot make me go to a meeting you can't what's this automatic shutoff <laughs>